Hello and welcome to Web3 Diaries. I'm your host Roshni Singhre. Hello and welcome to 3.0 TV. I am your host Shikha Singh giving you your daily dose of news snippets from the Web3 universe. Hello and welcome to Web3 Diaries. I am Vishakha Thakur. Let's start with the news for today. The line is getting longer. Ethereum validators that have put in withdrawal requests following last week's Shanghai upgrade will have to wait upwards of 17 days to get their staked ether back according to data from the blockchain analytic firm Nansen. That's up from about 14 days late last week. The unstaking request queue consists of some 28,436 validators looking to exit the beacon chain. There are a total of 575,359 validators on the Ethereum blockchain according to analytics firm Nansen. So roughly 5% of validators are choosing to leave Ethereum staking process. Validators are responsible for proposing and adding blocks of transactions to the Ethereum blockchain as part of validation process. In return, they are eligible for rewards of newly minted ETH and a share of associated transaction fees. But for those who have chosen to exit, there's a whole process that contributes to the length of the queue. According to Nicholas Pork, an analyst at Nansen, validators first send a voluntary message to exit involving a 25-minute wait. Then these validators join the exit queue which now sits at 11.7 days. Once they move out of this phase, they are faced with a withdrawal delay of about 27 hours. Finally, withdrawals are processed and deposited after another 4.25 days. In short, this means that if a validator decides to join the exit queue today, it will be 17 days by the time their ETH is returned. On the other hand, partial withdrawals only take about 4.27 days to process and are automatically deposited into validator addresses if their unstaking credentials are set up. A partial withdrawal means the validator is only withdrawing a portion of their staking rewards while keeping their staked ETH in play as part of the validating process. Over to you, Roshni. The United Arab Emirates has upped its effort in order to attract companies to open virtual asset services business in the country, which will help the Middle East country to become a global hub in the virtual digital assets. The country is looking to build a strong relationship with the better cryptocurrency industry in some of its region but now the Federal Financial Regulatory Agency of the UAE seeks to offer licenses to crypto companies that would allow them to offer virtual asset services countrywide. According to the recent announcement by the nation's Securities and Commodities Authority All virtual asset services providers who wish to operate in the country will have to submit an application to obtain the license. The application should be submitted to the CSA itself. The only companies exempt from going through the process are those already owning the licenses to operate in financial free zones. Meanwhile, cryptocurrency companies that operate in the Emirate of Dubai will still have to be in compliance of Dubai's own local financial regulator, Virtual Asset Service Authority. In other words, Dubai-based virtual asset services providers will need a VARA license and the CSA license. On December 11, Triple Two, the UAE's cabinet issued a new resolution number Triple One of 2022. The resolution regulated virtual assets to provide an attractive investment, economic, and financial environments for global companies and institutions operating in the virtual asset sector. As the document says, the new federal virtual assets law mandates following compliance in letter and spirit, failure to which could lead the massive financial fines. which could go up to 2.7 million dollars apart from that those who get fined could also be subject to disgorgement of profits or even a criminal investigation by the public prosecutors over to you shikha bankrupt crypto exchange ftx's plan to restart operations has drawn a bid from venture capital firm tribe capital bloomberg reported on tuesday citing people familiar with the matter Tribe, whose portfolio included FTX ahead of its dramatic collapse in November, is considering leading a $250 million fundraise with a $100 million commitment from itself, according to the report. 
A source told Bloomberg that Tribe Capital co-founder Arjun Sethi met with FTX's official committee of unsecured creditors in January to go over an informal proposal. The committee is working with the debtors to evaluate all options to reboot or sell the FTX exchanges and create value for creditors. FTX Creditors' committee tweeted on Tuesday, adding that there isn't a set timeline for a reboot or sell at this time. John J. Ray 3, the current chief of FTX, told the Wall Street Journal in January that the estate is exploring to restarting the crypto exchange, something the firm's attorneys repeated earlier this month. Until a formal process is launched, parties interested in purchasing or sponsoring a reboot of the FTX exchanges should contact the debtors and the committee, the creditors' committee tweeted. FTX's exchange token FTT jumped as much as 23% on the news of the Tribe Capital bid. That's it in today's special segment. For more such updates, keep watching Chidato TV. Do like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Do not forget to press the bell icon for more such updates. Thank you.